Today, I'm going to talk about the day versus night on keto and carnivore diets, and this one is important. Welcome everyone, welcome to my very humble channel, but let's get into it. Day versus night is in two contexts. Number one, it's your circadian rhythm with cortisol and melatonin release. The other problem is twitches, muscle cramps, dehydration, day versus night, and both of those things truly matter. When it comes to the evening versus the morning, every single thing matters. For example, with the circadian rhythm, you need cortisol to wake you up, to get everything moving in your body, to stabilize your blood pressure, to get your hormones in balance. We're getting ready for cortisol to arise so you can move, so you can eat, digest, and have energy. A lot of you are staying up too late and you're wondering why you're not getting into ketosis or you get better this much on carnivore, but not this much. That is because there are small nuances that we are not thinking about. Everything matters in a 24 hour day. What time you start drinking water, how much water, in the evening versus the morning. But if we start with the morning, Yes, you should start sipping on water because it can take up to 45 minutes to hydrate the cells after not drinking all night. You guys are wondering why you're having these symptoms of tired, nauseous, twitchy, crampy, and you're not timing out your fluid intake, nor are you timing out your minerals. Once you establish that, the time that you're getting up or what you're doing, are you going to the gym? Are you going to work? Or do you work from home and you don't have to really do much physically until you start working from your computer? The timing of your meals is so important as well as the timing of your fluids and the timing of your minerals. I recommend for people to do is to get up and start taking small sips of water because you are dehydrating throughout the night. This is gonna help stabilize your blood pressure your blood sugar, and your energy. A lot of people have low energy just simply because they're dehydrated. They didn't get in enough fluid the night before. And once you start sipping on that water, everything can start to normalize and balance, including your blood sugar. People are having muscle cramps at night because they didn't get enough of the proper minerals like magnesium, and potassium and sodium the day before. I recommend for people to take magnesium glycinate the night before, an hour before bed to start to calm down your central nervous system. Also magnesium glycinate is a very absorbable form of magnesium and can enter the bloodstream more quickly. Now some people have a histamine reaction to it, but most people don't. That's my number one recommended magnesium type. With that magnesium, if you've been drinking enough water, getting the five grams, and, and it depends on the type of sodium that you, you take in, if you're doing rock salt, or if you're doing Celtic sea salt, or I believe there's a certain type of salt in Mexico where they have pools of water that has even less sodium per gram. But if you are regulating your sodium intake throughout the day, and you're getting potassium in, then you shouldn't be having these leg cramps at night. So nighttime leg cramps, day night, nighttime leg cramps are, is, is a magnesium deficiency because you're not getting in enough or using too much magnesium citrate or oxide or bicarbonate or chloride. And you're trying to do transdermal chlorides and it's not enough because it's the summer and you've been mowing the lawn with a little Barbie doll lawnmower and you're sweating bullets and your skin is shining, but you're getting headaches and your legs are, and your calves are cramping up at night. That is a huge sign of magnesium deficiency 
along with water. Now, it's all three, but the domination of it is the magnesium deficiency. You sleep through the night, you're dehydrating, you wake up in the morning, you need to start sipping water. Now we need to focus on magnesium, but really potassium and sodium intake. One is different and it depends on how much sodium you sweat out, but you pretty much have about a teaspoon of salt throughout the day. It can be a little more or it can be a little less depending on the person or the types of foods that you're consuming that are higher in sodium. But most people sit around a teaspoon. There are people out there that do a tablespoon and they don't understand why they're, they're getting headaches or why they're getting muscle cramps or why they feel nauseous on a ketogenic or carnivore or even a low carb, high fat diet. It's very important to know how to balance your minerals. And for those who keep asking me in the chat, everybody is different. It really comes down to yesterday I was outside and almost every day mowing this two acres of pastured grass with this little tiny lawnmower and I'm sweating bullets and I did a video about this. The good side of that is I'm getting out uh, protein waste products that often slow down the, the filtration rate of your kidneys, but my skin is also releasing toxins. My lymphatic system is also releasing toxins. But the point is that I, ha I drink this, this cloudiness of this water has Celtic sea salt in it and there's less sodium per gram which means I, and it's sticking to the walls of this, which means after doing mowing this morning and I had to like run in, change my clothes, my sports bra was getting all wet, I had to hydrate immediately. So I'm going to be drinking more water uh, than me sitting in front of the computer and, and getting in a little bit more sodium per gram than if I were just to be inside the whole day on a humid day. There is no one answer for everyone. So in the chat or in the comments below, people are like, well, how much of this and how much that and how much protein to how much fat? I'm like, everybody is different. Stop counting grams. I mean, grams, percentages, that doesn't matter and count the grams. And that's also in your potassium. That's in your magnesium and your sodium. And then of course your proteins, your fats and your carbohydrates. If you're doing a keto omnivores and there's actually carbs in meat that people don't know that there is, but there's very, very small amounts. Now that I'm drinking and sipping on water and also timing out my food, because another thing that's very important is that you get up and eat something small. That's going to tell the medulla, the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid axis, I'm not starving. I'm eating something small, which sets my blood sugar to be more stable. I'm not eating something small to feed myself. I'm eating something small to stabilize my blood sugar so I don't go and mow the grass with an, on an empty stomach thinking I'm going to go through some autophagy when really my adrenals are stretched to the walls and my hormones start tanking because some gurus are saying, you know, just fast, everything, you got a pimple, just fast, you got a, you got a toenail, you got lint in your belly button, just fast, and then people can't understand why they've got dark circles under the eyes and crepey skin and their energy tanks and they're losing muscle, but they're not actually losing body fat, but that's a whole nother video. You eat your breakfast in the morning or you eat something small. If you know you're going to get up and do something strenuous, you eat something small, calm down this and the adrenals back here. And then you do your task. If it's the gym or mowing a lawn, two acres. And then eating a breakfast, sitting down, breathing, relaxing in the morning and having your first meal and let it digest. Rest, digest. A lot of you guys have leaky gut. You're not absorbing your nutrition. Things are ferment, fermenting in the small intestine, creating small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, bloat, an unfeeling of non-wellness, unfeeling, that's not a phrase not feeling well. Also, you have to consider the timing of your meals for those who've got dysglycemia, hypoglycemia, prediabetes, diabetics. You can't just go hours and fast. The fasting obsession gurus don't talk about people who have dysglycemia, hypoglycemia, and diabetes. 
they don't really hit the point of like if you go up and then you crash and then all of a sudden your hair starts falling out. They don't talk about that. They just go, oh, you can regulate your insulin. But the problem is an, a physiological insulin resistance rebound because now your blood sugar is just skyrocketing because your body cannot balance its hormones anymore because you keep doing activities on an empty stomach thinking that you're going to hit some tooth fairy autophagy and have cellular cleanup when you actually just have an inflammatory reaction from not getting enough stable blood sugar by eating something small throughout the day. Once you time out your meals, if you have dysglycemia particularly, you would eat small meals every three hours. And they're small. When I work with clients, they're like, my God, I'm eating all day. That's so much food. I'm like, no, you're eating like that much food for a snack. Just a little bit to tickle the brain. Like, I'm not starving. Don't over secrete cortisol for too long and then start breaking down amino acids and making my immune system weak and make me fat and autoimmune flaring up. You don't want to go through that. What you want to do is eat every couple of hours and that calms down the digestive tract instead of trying to get all your protein in two meals or all your protein in one meal. And that doesn't follow any type of circadian rhythm when cortisol is being re released. Then the switch over in the afternoon to a melatonin begins to climb and cortisol begins to go down. But in so many people that have inverted cortisol, cortisol starts shooting back up and then they become wired and tired in the evening. Like they could fall asleep around six to eight, but now zing, they're awake and they're watching TV and they're on their computers and their phones, completely going against the circadian rhythm and the day night cycles. Now you're being exposed to all this blue light. And there's a lot of varying factors when people want black and white answers, but their life isn't black and white. There are tiny little nuances throughout the entire day that people do that is counterintuitive and counterproductive to the homeostatic balance of your body systems. Basically, you're doing stuff that goes against the flow of your body balancing because other people don't talk about this. They're just like eat two pounds of beef and then you prime and you know, then you fast and then you're going to lose weight and then like your skin's going to clear up and your rheumatoid arthritis is going to be amazing. Your fibroids are going to shrink. And then I get these people like, oh, my fibroids aren't shrinking. They're growing exponentially. Uh, oh, I'm more tired now. My hair's falling out. And now I'm super bloated and I thought this was supposed to help me. Everyone is individual. It's very particular what you as an individual need to do to put your body in balance. But a lot of it has to do with day night cycles. You have to sleep throughout the night because if you don't, if you're one of those people that wake up, they're like, oh, I wake up to pee. I'm like, you don't wake up to pee. You wake up most likely because your blood sugar's unstable. It's destabilized. And then you notice you have to be P because ADH hormone is low. So there's a lot of little missing parts. And what I want to explain to people is you go to bed early, you start eating your dinner earlier before six, you chew slowly, you get up to eat something, you eat something small every three hours to stabilize blood sugar because we've developed dysglycemia as modern humans. And then you breathe. And you exercise and you sweat and you detox, get your electrolytes in. And that's when the magic happens. And that's what happened to me. And that's what's happened to other people that I've worked with now over the years. Cause I'm a dinosaur. I've been around here for so long. The next thing I really want to preface is understanding day cramps in comparison to night. If you're having twitches, face twitches, muscle twitches, cramps, locking up of your up of your calves, especially your ribs right there. You're very, very dehydrated and you are very potassium depleted. You need to balance potassium, but then you can't just take a bunch of potassium supplements or eat a bunch of avocados. You also have to balance your water and your sodium intake. And then once you've gotten that balance, those day twitches and cramps and locking up an extra lactic acid, which is a sign of dehydration. Like when you work out, you're like, Ooh, it's burning too much. Dehydrated people who do keto and carnivore diets, they lose a lot of fluids and it doesn't, doesn't stop. It will always continue as long as there's no carbohydrates. It's annoying, but it is, it is the only problem that I've run across. Not this nonsense that you're pancreas, I'm going to do a video about this, becomes more, um, uh, what is it, atrophied. And now 
you're, you're type one diabetic and you're not releasing insulin in the beta cells. I'm going to do a whole video on that. Absolute garbled nonsense. The day twitches is a potassium issue mainly. It's all of the minerals, but a lot of potassium is not there. You're not consuming it in the balance of sodium. And then your night twitches is because of magnesium. And a lot of you guys just order whatever online or go to the store or go to Target. I don't know. You're getting the wrong type. I've got people like, oh, I don't know why I feel so bad. I'm like, because you're taking magnesium oxide. No, 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 no. The type of magnesium matters. So that's going to be nighttime locking up of the calves, the toes, and the locking up of your ribs and your calves, your legs and the muscle spasms is a mainly a potassium problem. And it's all about understanding day and night, circadian rhythms, hormones. At night, you want to release a uh, growth hormone. You want to release, you want to have your testosterone. You want to make DHEA. You want the cells to repair. You are going to pee out these waste products and poop out in the morning. That's another thing. People should wake up and poop in the morning and start eliminating and they eat all day and then the next day they poop now some people poop twice a day anybody who's got their urgency and they're freaking out and they got to poop a third time you might have a gut dysbiosis so that may not be normal and you might be losing fluids but I digress also side note constipation can be missing a day can be pooping every day with hard stool or a loose stool can also be a sign of dehydration and constipation and you're losing more fluid body's so interesting if you guys want to learn more also with cortisol that's another day night hormonal thing to consider your blood sugar fasted should be stable uh the early morning dawn's phenomenon happens typically to people who are insulin resistant people who've got pretty balanced blood pressure resting heart rate and blood sugar don't have these extreme dumps of glucose from the liver in the morning they don't these are people who cannot control their hormones their hormones are not in rhythm and their circadian rhythm is out of balance so managing your blood sugar sugar according according to cortisol in the morning and glucagon also keeping your blood sugar balance it is a game changer to your reproductive hormones to your mental stability it's i mean i could go on and on and on but i really just want to focus on in the morning, you should get up and eat something small if you're going to be going to work out. If you're not working out, you should slide into a small breakfast. Unless you're really hungry, eat more, but you don't have to overeat a breakfast. You don't necessarily have to eat like a king, but you have to stabilize your blood sugar by eating throughout the day because most of us cannot stabilize our blood sugar. But once you do all these little nuances and these things, it's amazing how your body just snaps into place and what you were battling with before, like my thyroid's tanking, my testosterone, men, and my testosterone's low. Um, I have chronic fatigue. Uh, my menstrual cycle's inconsistent. All of these things begin to normalize. Of course, there's a the whole thing of getting toxins out, but once you understand what to eat, what to do, and what type of... Um, uh, food to consume at what part of the day and how much and your electrolyte balance and how to even how to drink your water or how to eat your food which is to chew it and turn it into just liquid and not swallow chunks of food is all connected to day night cycles because you're going to have enough day hormones like cortisol to get motility and you pooping and food to be digest rather than going down the Addison's route or having low cortisol or having your cortisol flip and be too high at night. I hope this helps. Uh, I also want to say one more thing. I'm going to do a video on this. Somebody was complaining that all the facial expressions on the thumbnails is so ridiculous. It is. But believe it or not, if you don't clickbait, if you don't have these crazy, and they even tell you, You've got to have high quality resolution thumbnails. It has to be bombastic or bombastic. You have to have draw people in. The titles have to be this. You have to have hashtags. They have to be, they make you do like 10 different things. And if you don't, you get buried in the algorithm. So all the work that you do is for naught. 
unless you're doing like on the thumbnails. It sucks. I tried to avoid even monetizing my videos in the beginning because I didn't want people to watch advertisements while looking at my content. And that did not serve me well. It's like you do a lot of work almost for nothing. You only reach a small amount of people. If you guys want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com, sign up for a consultation. Uh, I also run a $15 a month subscription based month to month course where I cover all three diets and all this information. I'm doing a 30 day challenge as well in September. Signups will start. So I'll announce the exact date where I'm going to take everything that I've ever learned and consolidate it into one challenge. It's going to work sort of like a 30 day extended course, but it's going to be amazing because I'm working my ass off and I've got like now a few people helping me. Okay. Then, um, Follow me on Instagram at Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook is Stephanie the Business Person. I'm 55 going on 56 and I remind people because now we can go through my video catalog of being on the internet for, what, 13 years talking about this stuff and see the biohacking, I hate that expression, but to see the benefits of how you should be aging gracefully. Energy! And I'm out. Check out the next video. Comment below if you forget to eat, if you don't sleep, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, which is blood sugar problem. It could be a gallbladder issue, but mainly blood sugar. Talk about if you're peeing all night, if you're tired in the morning, do you have energy? Do you tank in the after day, in the afternoon? Do you have postprandial postprandial hypo or reactive hypoglycemia in the afternoon? You need to take a nap. You guys, it all works together cortisol then we have melatonin and then if you make enough melatonin at night you wake up with serotonin like i do and you wake up happy and if you don't make make enough melatonin to then make enough serotonin feel like shite and i'm out peace